The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are they given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so today, we, we recognize and read, most specifically, in the first reading from the book of Maccabees and in the gospel today, we read and hear about the central aspect, one of the most foundational uh, details of our Catholic Christian faith, the faith that we have in Christ, that at the end of time, in God's perfect time and in God's perfect plan, there will be a resurrection of the body for all people who have lived and died. This particular aspect of our Catholic faith is oftentimes forgotten or uh, pushed off to the side. We get so wrapped up in the needs and the difficulties of our present earthly life that we forget for what it is we are actually living. We forget for what it is that our souls and minds and hearts should be aimed at. In our earthly life, of course, there are many different things and many different ways in which we should seek to uh, avoid any harm or any evil in this present life, any pain and suffering, but... More importantly, we should always keep in mind our ultimate goal, hopefully, of receiving the gift of heaven with our Lord and Savior, and that ultimately we would remember that not only are we to share spiritually with God in heaven for all eternity, that is not the only goal we have, but that even at the very end of the world, at the end of all time, God will reunite us spiritually and physically. We will be reunited in body and soul and share in perfect joy, love, and peace with God in heaven for all eternity, as was the original design in the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve, both bodily and spiritually, shared life and love and peace with God in the garden. This particular aspect of our faith is so critical. This particular detail of our faith is so central to who we are as a people in God that it is one of the very last things, one of the most important parts of the creed which we say every week one of the most important parts of what we uh, proclaim to God and what we proclaim to the world to be one of the most important things that we hope for. At the very end of the creed, which we will pray together as a community in Christ, together we will say, 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. All of this is to say again and again that the realities that we face in this life, although they are important, all the experiences and difficulties and triumphs that we experience in this life, they are meant to be a foundation. They are meant to be a preparation for our ultimate resurrection and our ultimate life in heaven. Today, particularly in the first gospel, in the book of Maccabees, we read about this holy Jewish family, this holy family that desired above all else to follow the Word of God to follow the law of God regardless of what society told them, regardless of the pain and suffering that they would suffer at the hands of those uh, pagan authorities. The, the basic uh, background of the Maccabean time in Jewish history is that at this time, Alexander the Great, a Macedonian, uh, leading the armies of Greece was going around the world uh, conquering all the peoples and all the lands that he possibly could. Ultimately, parts of the Holy Land, parts of what we would call Israel nowadays, parts of those areas were also in fact overtaken by the Greeks. And so because of this reality, they introduced to the Jewish peoples different pagan ways of living. They introduced to the peoples the worship of false idols, the worship of false gods, and even at times the worship of demons. There was great sexual immorality amongst the people. There was great immorality amongst the Greeks, uh, the pagan Greeks at this time, because if we think about the mythology that they had, if we think about the gods and goddesses that they worshipped, the gods and goddesses of the Greek pantheon amongst themselves, there was great jealousy, there was great hatred. Some gods would murdy, murder other gods. Some gods would steal from other gods. Some gods would lie to other gods. If this is the kind of religion that the pagan Greeks had at that time, if this is how their very gods acted amongst themselves, then what hope could there be for how society would work out? What hope could there be for brother and sister to treat each other with dignity and in good faith? So because of this difficult dynamic in society at this time, the Maccabeans, the Jewish peoples, had to make a choice. Either they would follow the way of their pagan overlords, they would follow the pagan way of life, or they would remain faithful to God on high, they would remain faithful to His holy word and His holy uh, commandments, and they would remain faithful to their relationship and to their love of the one true God. Ultimately, in the first reading, we hear of how a family of seven, uh, a family of seven Jewish brothers and sisters, had to suffer publicly at the hands of the Greeks because instead of giving up their relationship with Yahweh, instead of giving up their relationship with the one true God, they put off to the side, they cast off of themselves the following of the fads of the age. They cast off from themselves following in the way of death and destruction that the pagan religions offered to them. They say, the, the first reading says that they were able to suffer all kinds of torture and all kinds of pain and even death for our God because of the fact that they knew that so long as they remained in faith in this life with our Lord, 
our Lord would ultimately raise them up from death. He would save them from pain, from death, from misery. And He would lift them up to life eternal, to a life of joy, and to a life of eternal peace. My friends, this particular dynamic is exactly the same for our own day and age. In our own day and age, in so many different ways, society has cast off the wisdom of our heavenly God. We have been forced to remove God from our schools. We have been forced to remove God from our courts. We have been forced to remove God from our politics. In the false belief that we now, because we are such a modern people, we are wiser than those who came before us. We are wiser even than God Himself. This is the ultimate lie through which many aspects of our society have fallen into complete chaos. So many different aspects of our society have fallen to complete confusion. Again, because we do not remember that the choices we make here and now have eternal consequences. We forget that the choices here and now either allow God's love and mercy to enter into the world or we, we prohibit God's love and mercy from working not only in our lives but in the lives of of our brothers and sisters around us. Sadly, like uh, like many of the Jewish brothers and sisters that we read of in the book of Maccabees, sadly, so many of us in our own day and age, so many of our Christian brothers and sisters, in different ways have accepted the pagan way of life that our society offers to us. So sadly, so many of us, in our different ways, we accept the different ways that society puts forth for us to live our lives in complete rejection of God's holy word, in complete rejection of the love and life that God desires for us. How many of our brothers and sisters accept the lie and the confusion and the chaos that comes from accepting abortion, homosexual unions, divorce, fornication. So many of these different aspects, like the Greek pagans before us, they, this is what caused their ultimate downfall. Not remembering that the dignity of the human person goes beyond what we see here and now in this earthly life that the dignity of the human person goes so much beyond what we see in our brothers and sisters here in this world, that if we could see truly with the eyes of God, with the eyes of faith, we would more genuinely and more lovingly accept the wisdom of God, not only because it is ultimately true, but most importantly, because it will bring for us true life, true love, and true peace. My friends, the time that we are given in this world is short indeed. If we are lucky, many of us might live 70, 80, perhaps even 90 years. But we must be careful that that we recognize that the choices we make in this short amount of time, prepare us and give us the foundation for what we are to receive for life eternal. That in this moment, beginning with this very day, we would be willing to choose God above all else in this life, so that hopefully at the end of our earthly lives, for the life eternal, we would also be ready and willing to accept life with God in heaven for all eternity. My friends, the resurrection is coming. The resurrection is part of our holy Catholic faith, that we would prepare ourselves diligently 
and with great vigilance. For we know not the day nor the hour, but our ultimate goal, our ultimate reality, is found in new life and eternal life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.